morning, everyone. I've come here today to talk to you about schools and the future of our country, our multicultural country. Now, maybe it isn't the right time for me to make the case for multiculturalism, given the events of the last few weeks, but it really doesn't have to be this way. Multiculturalism can succeed. Schools have huge impact on the moral formation of our children. Our schools should immerse children in values that promote cohesion rather than division. Now, I'm known as Britain's strictest headmistress. In fact, believe it or not, if you ask Google who is the strictest teacher in the world, my name comes up. <laughs> I run a secondary school called Michaela in London's inner city in Wembley. Our strict culture understands broken windows theory, just as Giuliani did when he turned around New York. Every year, 800 visitors from all around the world visit our school to get a glimpse of our thriving multicultural, multiracial community where the academic progress is astonishing and the children are polite, kind, and driven. Our school, Michaela, opened in 2014 after nearly four years of fighting with the hard left. They protested with placards at uh, information events for parents, handed leaflets to the children to scare them, broke onto our school site, and so much more. But Michaela is a delightful school where children are immersed in small c conservative values, where we teach them to take personal responsibility, to reject victimhood, to have a sense of duty towards others, and to embrace the idea of self-sacrifice for the betterment of the whole. We teach our children to be grateful for what they have, however little it may be, to be kind to others, and to love their country. And no matter how often that they're told that they are oppressed, that the establishment is against them because they are poor, or they're black, or they live on an estate, or that white supremacy reigns, it will always be the case that we have agency. We can and will jump over any obstacles that may li lie ahead of us, and we will always work hard. I put it to you that when schools do not immerse children in these small c conservative values, when schools do not have strict behavior systems immersed in love, when schools do not hold their standards high for all children, whatever their backgrounds, multiculturalism fails. I am an example of the success of multiculturalism. My Guyanese father descends from an Indian background, Hindu and Muslim. My Jamaican mother descends from a Christian background. I was born in New Zealand and given the middle Maori name of Moana, but I am named Catherine after the white New Zealand writer, Catherine Mansfield. With my mixed race, black and Indian diaspora heritage, I grew up in Canada and the UK with stints in Nigeria and France. The values I encountered as a child made me into an open-minded adult. I'm not for one minute suggesting that diversity is our strength. I'm saying quite the opposite. The more diverse a school or indeed a society, the more difficult it is to make it work. So it requires our specific and careful attention. Multiculturalism will fail in our country without strict rules and small c conservative values in our schools. Because without this, children inevitably retreat into tribalism. It is a natural human desire to want to belong. We should belong to our country, whatever our culture, col color, and whatever our religion. But too often, schools have contempt for the demonstration of love of one's country. Hardly anyone even sings the national anthem anymore. At Michaela, every week we sing patriotic songs like God Save the King or I Vow to Thee My Country. We encourage our children to satisfy their desire for belonging by identifying as British, whatever their religion, whatever their race. Identifying as British, amongst other things, means we are grateful for the rule of law. Strict rules, anyone? We share secular values inherited from the Judeo-Christian tradition of fair play and treating our neighbor as we would ourselves. And we believe in the power of institutions that have stood the test of time, like the monarchy. But if our schools don't really believe in anything, 
where children might be encouraged to ignore or even hate their country. Not only will these children struggle to succeed as individuals, but multiculturalism itself cannot succeed. If schools promote BLM and LGBT and various other tribal identities instead of instilling an overarching set of small c conservative values, they encourage children to identify as victims instead of empowering them with the values of hard work, perseverance, and resilience. This is deeply destructive to a child's happiness and to our multicultural country's cohesiveness. When we exaggerate difference, we exacerbate tribalism. It is in our human souls to seek belonging. If an ethnic child feels he cannot belong to his country, then he will first identify with his race, religion, or other victim group. Rather than see himself first as British, standing alongside his white British brothers and sisters, he retreats into his racial or religious tribe. Sadly, too many schools currently cheer this thinking on. Some of you will say that while our school, Michaela, is multiracial, it is not multicultural, precisely because we have a shared sense of values and shared place. But that isn't true. Our children eat different foods, wear different clothes, pray to different gods, embrace different cultures. But they do this under the umbrella of being British and in a school with high expectations and strict rules where the team always trumps the individual. A, <laughs> a school is a microcosm of society. Look at the schools that top the National Progress 8 chart. Most are faith-based. They have an overarching set of values that binds them together, imposed by their faith. For schools that are multi-faith or multi-racial, like Michaela, which has come top of the Progress 8 chart these last two years, special attention must be spent on creating an overarching set of small c conservative values and love of country to ensure success. White people, even when there isn't a brown person in sight, are tribal too. The nationalist and unionist communities in Northern Ireland don't get on. The Basque and Catalonian regions of Spain don't get on either. All people, whatever their color, need an overarching set of traditional values and national identity which can unite them. If all... <laughs> If all schools were like Michaela, we could create cultural societal norms where we understand self-sacrifice and put the success of our multicultural country before our own selfish desires. But in 2023, we are so far from this. Instead, we have an anything goes culture, which I have to say is encouraged by both the left and the libertarians. Yes, that's right. Listen up, libertarians. <laughs> the right, without small c conservative values and national identity, gives free reign to rampant progressivism. You do you, honey. If all we ever say is, it isn't fair, the other guy has more than I do, or we just want freedom to do whatever we want, then we miss the beauty of life. A fulfilled life, is one brimming with purpose in helping one's fellow man. As a country, we have had success with multiculturalism in the past. The example of Scotland demonstrates that an overarching identity created over different cultures can be done. Both England and Scotland preserved their distinctive traditions from the mid 19th century through to the 1960s. But crucially, since the 1960s, the weakening of that common identity and the erosion of small c conservative values has led to division. According to gov.co.uk, 
37% of our 18 to 24 year olds, not just in London, but in the whole country, are not proud to be British, with another 11% who have no idea whether or not they are proud. So nearly half of our young adults, most of whom have been homegrown in our schools, cannot express pride in their country. While illegal and excessive immigration need addressing, as does culturally relative sentencing in the criminal justice system, if we want multiculturalism to succeed and tribalism to fail, we must stop ignoring the enormous, crucial power of our schools. This isn't just for Britain. All countries should listen to what I am suggesting. We should teach children allegiance to nationhood. It should be non-negotiable. We should teach children about self-sacrifice and putting the country before themselves. The point of life is not to have more than the other man has. The point of life is to be kind to others, to learn, to teach, and to push ourselves beyond what we thought was possible. The point of life is the journey, not the destination. Get our schools to immerse our children in small c conservative values and strict rules with love. And I guarantee you across the country, multiculturalism would be a roaring success. Thank you.